Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, neighbor just dropped this off. Um, she said that uh, every time you plug it in and try and start the blade, it uh, trips the circuit breaker in the house. So I guess we're gonna get to work on an electric lawnmower today. This is a Black & Decker 13 amp uh, electric lawnmower. I've never worked on one of these, but I don't believe they're very complicated. So without further ado, let's tear into it. All right, let's remove this cover. Okay, what we have here is a is the, the DC motor and the bridge rectifier here. Um, looks like this motor was built on February 7th, 2015. Um, my guess is that something is shorted and it is probably the, the bridge rectifier here. So, um, you can see this is the rectifier in here. Um, one of these leads coming out is the, is the positive uh, voltage plus and one is the ground and this is probably connected to the neutral uh, wire on the AC. Um, that would be my guess. Uh, that's what I think. Um, why don't we go over uh, how these bridge rectifiers work. Alright, so a bridge rectifier is basically a circuit to convert AC power that you would get out of uh, you know, a wall outlet to DC uh, power. And this, it's, it's basically a series of four diodes connected in a ring like this and you have your AC 120 volts connected across here. So this is 120 volts AC across here. Um, and then you have your DC coming out of here. And this is your plus and your minus or ground and basically how it works is a diode just you know allows current to flow through it one way so when the voltage here is higher than it is here current will flow this way and when the voltage is higher here than here nothing will flow it basically is a, a one way it's like a check valve for a circuit and um, so 120 volts AC coming out of the, the wall is basically a sine wave um, that, uh, you know, looks like that. And it repeats every 1 60th of a second. So this one period is 1 60th of a second. 60 hertz. So it, it cycles 60 times per second. That's that's what they mean by when when you say 60 hertz uh, AC. And um, the 120 volts is the peak to peak voltage. So for a time, the voltage is higher on this line, and so current will flow this way to the plus and then when you get to this part of the cycle the voltage actually is higher here than it is here so then you will actually get current flowing from this side of the AC circuit this way to the plus and when you look at it when the current is lower here it's blocking this so you, the current can't flow this way backwards through the circuit you know, so um, that's how this bridge rectifier works. So, uh, what you actually get out of it is um, a uh, waveform that that kind of looks like this. You get that out on this, 
and that's really not DC so what they do is they add some filtering uh, you know circuits shunt circuits and you know there there's there's some sort of uh, impedance here that will charge up this capacitor will charge up and it will discharge on these cycles so it will charge up here and it will kind of ramp down and so your actual output kind of looks like that and this is called the 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 ripple voltage from here to here is your ripple DC ripple and you want to design this this filter so that your ripple voltage is as low as possible um, so you can you can do calculation based on the the output voltage across here and your input voltage and your frequency um, 60 Hertz you can design a, a impedance here that will um, minimize this ripple now you can get really complicated and you can get uh, you know very complicated circuits and uh, filters and things like that in here to take out more of this ripple but um, I'm guessing in a, in a lawnmower or something along those lines that um, it's it's pretty basic uh, probably just a capacitor and resistor or some combination of that so that is how and so that this right here is the bridge rectifier and um, that has gone bad so when one of these diodes one or more of them shorts out um, basically you now have a short to one side or the other so if say for instance this diode stops working and it has shorted out and you get just a a straight connection through here so when this is high you get plus voltage here and everything else is working correctly Th these diodes don't allow you to uh, the current can't flow backwards through here but then when this this line right here the voltage on this goes higher than here the current is going to draw is going to flow through here but it can also now flow backwards through this uh, diode that has gone bad and now it shorts out your circuit so now it's it's like putting a, a screwdriver or you know uh, something across your AC outlet it, it's going to trip the circuit breaker because now you're you're basically shorting the two you know the two sides of the circuit and um, that is what was happening in this lawnmower so I, uh, so now we'll, I'll take you back to the video and um, we can replace that rectifier. All right, I took off the um, the plastic uh, cover shroud thing so that we could get a better look at what was going on in here. So this is pretty pretty simple stuff. If uh, you remember what I explained earlier, so here's the 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 load, the motor, and um, this one of these two is the positive. Uh, positive voltage coming out of the rectifier. One is the uh, ground or, or negative and um, down here is uh, the filter, capacitor, resistors, uh, whatever, shunt filter for um, taking out the ripple in uh, some of the ripple in the uh, resulting DC or resulting waveform out of the rectifier and the other two, this black and this white would are going to be the AC input to the rectifier. So um, normally what happens in these rectifiers is one of the diodes shorts out and we are going to get a short across here. So let's see if we can measure the resistance across the, um, the AC leads. All right, rain is coming so I got to hurry up. Um, so right now I have my multimeter set on uh, resistance uh, right there, the lowest resistance setting, 200 ohm setting uh, range, and um, I have my one probe on one side of the AC input, and here measuring the other side, and that is effectively a short circuit. So. I am going to say that this uh, bridge rectifier is bad. Um, 
and so I'm gonna go look up the part number and see how much it it costs and then I will um, tell uh, the customer my neighbor um, the news and see what she wants to do all right so I have the uh, rectifier removed um, make sure you remember which uh, which way the wires go on I have this video to uh, look back on but um, you may not um, I'm going to look up this part online and figure out um, what I need to order and um, I don't know if you can see it but the number here is KBPC2504 um, and um, yeah look that up and see okay so I got in the new part it is uh, the part number is the same KBPC2504 and it um, looks like it's pretty much compatible with the old one. The um, pinout looks the same. This one is uh, perpendicular to the others. Same with this. So, say so let's uh, put it on and give it a shot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and wipe all of this thermal compound off and get this plate uh, heat sink really clean. Okay, so I got this plate clean. This plate essentially functions as a as a heat sink um, for the rectifier. So any heat that this thing generates is kind of supposed to get dissipated by this metal plate. Um, so you want a really good contact between the rectifier and the plate. And you want to use some sort of uh, a thermal compound um, in between to make sure that the transfer of heat is good. Now, anybody who has ever put together a um, computer or you know mounted a CPU should know that you really don't want a thick layer of thermal compound. You actually want a very thin layer. Um, it's only there to fill in any gaps you know, or voids in the metal. Um, it's, it's not there to actually conduct the heat per se, it's just there to um, facilitate the, the heat transfer. So you really only want a thin layer of this stuff um, on here. Uh, and so that's what I'm doing, I'm spreading a very thin layer, very thin layer on that, and then I'm going to spread a very thin layer on this. So just fill in any, you know, gaps or voids in the metal making sure that it's so like that that is more than thick enough so when I put this down on this plate it kinda slides around a little bit but kinda sticks that's kind of what you want. You don't want it to be sliding around too much. That means you have too thick of a layer. Just real thin like that. Okay. So then, so now I'm going to get the screw. There's that screw. And I'm going to put this back. In there like that. Okay, now just connect up the wires and you should be good to go. I'm going to go back to the video and check, uh, double check the uh, wiring. 
Okay, so it is just this kind of where the wires are. Black, red, blue, green, and white. All right. All right, before I put any of the uh, plastic uh, shrouds and covers back on, I am going to test to make sure that this actually starts and runs and doesn't trip the circuit breaker. So it is plugged in and ready to go. Let's see what she does. Well, I say that's fixed. Let me put all this plastic back on. Okay, it's done. So the compound that you can you use between the um, rectifier and the uh, plate heat sink uh, is just any any computer thermal compound, um, you know, any heat sink compound. Um, popular ones are like Arctic silver, you know, things along that line. But you know, anything anything that's made for um, you know, a thermal coupling between a, a heat sink and a CPU or, you know, whatever uh, will do. So that's, that's what you use. So if you like these videos, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you on the next one.